Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review of the movie Deadpool and Wolverine. Watched it in 4K, and it was awesome. I love this movie. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman as Deadpool and Wolverine work very well in this movie. Uh, one weird thing is, yeah, this is uh, 4K, you got the Blu-ray and you got the digital code, but uh, evidently... Uh, when you do this, if you want the gag reel and most of the other kind of like special features, uh, you have to go to the Blu-ray. So it's like, all right, that's that's kind of weird. So just to let you know that if you want to see the stuff that goes kind of with like the bonus features and all that, you're going to have to shift from the 4K one to the Blu-ray one. And this is just a fun movie. Uh, it doesn't really connect much other than stuff that they do with the TVA and Loki, and they do a great enough job of pretty much setting up uh, the whole kind of TVA and everything without having it have to be an exposition dump or just vomiting everything kind of up at once. This is very much a Deadpool movie, and then the Wolverine that we kind of get introduced throughout what's kind of going on here. So... We pretty much start off, and uh, Deadpool is trying to find Logan, and is like, oh, he's probably still alive. And we get pretty much them desecrating the corpse as the TVA are trying to bring uh, Wilson in, and he just starts killing them with Wolverine's, uh, well, Logan's corpse, and it's just funny as shit as he's dancing to fucking Bye Bye Bye. It just... <laughs> they did some really inventive kills, and they had a lot of good... Uh, song choices in this especially when we get to like a great fight scene between uh deadpool and wolverine uh to acdc's hell's bells you don't really get hell's bells kind of used like that in a movie uh let alone as a fight scene kind of one and i'm like thank you acdc's my favorite band so i'm like yes so deadpool then gets into kind of explaining what's kind of going on that at he did get to the main Marvel Universe, uh, 616, uh, in 2018, and pretty much tried to do an interview with Happy to get the Avengers, and Happy lets him down, but this leads to him uh, going and being a kind of car salesman, and him not really being happy with his job, and uh, Vanessa leaving him as well, and they do like this kind of birthday party thing for him, and it's... <laughs> It's just not really going to go on well. Interesting kind of digs at Disney as he's talking with uh, his roommate Al, uh, Blind Al, and uh, talking about how they can't really say stuff about like cocaine and shit. And then uh, he goes outside and gets pretty much accosted by the TVA. And they're like, you got to come with us. And it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But then, of course, he gets brought in and we get introduced to Paradox, uh, who's like, let me see here. Yes. Okay. And they pretty much gives a whole kind of lowdown, sacred timeline, everything like that, and that they want him to kind of like join and be this kind of like make him something more. And at first he's like, oh, okay, like to help like monitor the sacred timeline and everything, and giving him pretty much a future on the main kind of timeline. However, he finds out that he's doing this because uh, his timeline lost their anchor beam. Logan. And this is an interesting kind of concept that we've got now, that certain kind of beings, if they die, the timeline dies. It could take thousands of years. It could take no time at all. But once that being's gone, that timeline then dies. And uh, Paradox, of course, does bring up the whole thing that the TVA doesn't do the pruning and stuff anymore of the different kind of timelines. However, uh, Paradox is doing his own kind of thing because uh, he's kind of a dick. And I do think that they cast a pretty good dude. Uh, he, I mainly know him as playing uh, Mr. Darcy from like the Kieran Knightley Pride and Prejudice. Uh, but he just plays that kind of smarmy asshole that just works very well here. And Wade's like, wait, this fuck ass is like our anchor being. And he's like, my whole world's there. Uh, what can I do here? 
And the thing is, Paradox doesn't want to wait that long, so he's going to use a Time Ripper to like accelerate the process. So he kind of steals the dude's temp pad, and he, his idea is to somehow uh, get a new anchor beam. So we see him kind of going through and seeing all these different kind of Logans. We see them throughout various different kind of uh, uh, dark futures, like the Wolverine that doesn't have his hand. We see uh, a comic accurate Wolverine, which is a shrunk down Hugh Jackman, and that was fucking hilarious. We get Calverine, Henry Cavill as a cameo in here. Like, they go all out and utilize the multiverse concept to a very good degree here. They balance it very well, in my opinion. I also like how <laughs> uh, Deadpool pretty much just says, fuck off to Fox, and they're like, hey, Disney. Um, but this is a nice, it, it ties into the whole theme that's pretty much a send-off of the whole Fox era Marvel heroes and everything. And I think it does it very well, executes it very well, and Deadpool is still the kind of anchor. Uh, Blade is also in this movie, Wesley Snipes. Uh, even though he's from New Line, I do like that they pretty much included him. We get Channing Tatum as Gambit, who does a very good comic slash TV show accurate Gambit in this. It just works very well because he's going through it. We see all this kind of crazy shit, and then he gets to the Wolverine that we find. Supposedly the worst Wolverine. And that uh, he brings him back, uh, and Paradox is like, no, fuck you, man. Like... You bring us the worst Wolverine? This is not how this shit works. Uh, you can't just, like, replace an anchor beam. And uh, then we see that Wade's like, wait a minute, you're doing shit that you're not supposed to be doing because you would have just had the higher ups kind of do this shit. It's like, ah, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And then, of course, he's able to prune both uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, sending them to the Void, uh, where Cassandra Nova is pretty much reigning supreme. We got Eliath. We get introduced to, at first, what Wade thinks is a Cap variant, but it is actually Chris Evans playing his Johnny Storm persona, bearded and everything, as we've got everything kind of going crazy. We get the first Sabretooth, not the Wolverine origin Sabretooth. We get Toad. We get Pyro. We get some from X-Men First Class, we get weird juggernauts, everything kind of going nutty, and so they pretty much get taken to Cassandra Nova pretty much to be either join them or get fed to Eliath, so that way they can just stay in the void and do the shit that they want to do. Uh, and the thing is, she's the twin sister to Xavier. We get that whole kind of spiel put down. We see that uh, Wade and uh, Wolverine are still trying to pretty much suss each other out. They had that great kind of fight scene, and it's really kind of cool because we see Wolverine actually acting like an animal. Hugh Jackman is definitely able to differentiate the Wolverine that we've mainly followed throughout the Fox movies and this Wolverine. He's got a different... I mean, they got some similarities, but he's got more of an animalistic fighting style, and I love seeing the fighting differences that we've got with Deadpool and him fighting uh, Little Baby Knife, uh, Wade... An important bit is that uh, this fight really wouldn't work out as well if Wade did not get a kind of upgrade of getting Antimantium Katanas because Paradox was able to outfit him in his kind of Deadpool outfit and kit because he had left it pretty much in like Peter, uh, uh, the Peter dude's locker, the kind of dude from X-Force that he's like co-workers with. But that was just really... It's important to showcase the characters and their movement. How Wolverine, de how this Wolverine deals with fighting scenarios. Yes, utilizing his claws and everything. Uh, even Wade pretty much trying to get him to come with him. He's like, yeah, fuck you on that. But he thought that he could potentially uh, help Wolverine. I mean, they're the TVA. They should be able to fix that kind of stuff, right? But we get to the end of the movie and we kind of learn our kind of lesson there on why you really don't need to do that. So we see that Cassandra Nova is a force to be reckoned with because she kills Johnny because Deadpool says that Johnny said all this kind of stuff. And we learn at the end portion of the movie that Johnny did say all this stuff and just pretty much vindicating himself. There's no after credit scene that ties to any kind of overarching new kind of Marvel product or whatnot. We get uh, kind of behind the scenes stuff with the kind of Fox uh, Marvel movies, and then Deadpool just being like, yeah, Johnny said all that shit. 
fuck that asshole kind of shit. It's like, oh god. Uh, so that was pretty much gone, and we see them kind of fucking around. Uh, she really has a hard on for pretty much taking down any kind of Charles Xavier. Uh, there are other variants. We, of course, get uh, linked up with Doctor Strange kind of variants. Not in this movie, but of course, uh, a sling ring is utilized as an important kind of plot point to get out of the void later on. But she pretty much wants to utilize Wolverine as her own kind of, like, killer kind of thing. But she's like, hey, if you're not going to do any of this shit, what up? And Wolverine's like, fuck you. Gets pretty much thrown through the ground as Wade pretty much like dances around and then Elioth kind of comes in but they kind of escape and get introduced to Nice Pool, which is just Ryan Reynolds, like Deadpool, but like Ryan Reynolds' uh, beautiful face and has a dog pool. And it's like, oh yeah, uh, you, you kind of don't want to mess with the other kind of Deadpools. There's a lot of variants around here that aren't really that nice. I'm the nice one. And Wolverine's like, I'm, I'm I have no idea. What the fuck? How do I even deal with this asshole? And wants to pretty much lead them to the resistance that would be fighting Cassandra. Uh, so he pretty much sets them up into this Honda Odyssey, which Deadpool fucking hates. But they kind of start going through their kind of bonding before it's pretty much let slip that Wade doesn't know if they would be able to undo and fix Wolverine's world and Wolverine goes fucking ham on him to the point that they're fighting in this minivan and it is another very well executed fight scene being able to keep the action in focus showcasing how the characters interact here how uh Deadpool's like this is my world I need to save my world and he's like you just fucking lied to me he's like wishful <laughs> Wishful, educated, wishful guessing kind of shit. And then just like ripping apart the van and Wolverine actually really getting into it. Like, you fucking asshole. I'm like, what's kind of going on? Why is he so much in this kind of pain about what's kind of going on? And we pretty much get that towards the end of the film. This thing is like two hours and eight minutes. It does not overstay its welcome. It's very, I, it knows what it's doing. So, we then pretty much wake up after their kind of fight. Of course, they're regenerating everything. Uh, Wolverine has pretty much tied the shit out of uh, Deadpool up. And then, of course, we see somebody drive them off before we get introduced to the Resistance. Uh, Jennifer Gardner as her Electra character. Uh, Wesley Snipes as Blade. Uh, of course, Channing Tatum as Gambit. And, God, he's just great. And we also see uh, Laura X-23, here. It's like, wow, shit, crazy. And... They kind of start to try and figure out a plan to kind of take down Cassandra Nova, utilizing uh, Juggernaut's helmet to pretty much stop her psychic abilities and to pretty much get her in a spot to pretty much force them to be able to let them out. And of course, we see that Elektra is pretty much bringing up the whole thing. I'm like, eh, we could at least get an end. And to have an ending for these characters and all these things, especially when you've gone through and done all these different kind of corporate murders and crazy shit, and sometimes they don't give any kind of conclusions or endings to these kind of franchises and then just let them drop off and die. I kind of like them exploring that. And kind of, even though it's more of a kind of meta commentary, I like that the meta kind of commentary was kind of brought back into the fold to actually make that kind of awesome story beat for us to have this here. And Wolverine's like, no, fuck that shit. And of course we see tension because Gambit's like, uh, it's kind of rude to come in and start drinking somebody else's alcohol, you asshole. And he's like, oh, fuck off, whatever. And before Gambit kind of tossing his card and everything and they're <laughs> making fun of him, like, ooh, you make things go boom. It's like, yeah, Gambit's a, is not someone to be fucked with, man. And we see Wade's pretty much got them all on the same page and Wolverine's like, I don't want to help them. I fucked up. And of course, he explains to Lara what happened. That, And they're even saying, fuck the Avengers in his world. And it's like, yeah, the Avengers have a bad track record of not helping mutants. And I'd like that story to be kind of explored when it kind of comes into the MCU as well. And how he said that he had left. He pretty much went drinking at a bar. And then he got back and all of them were dead. 
that some mutant hunting humans had come in and did it, and then he went and he started just killing. He went into a berserker rage, and he didn't just stop at the people that were responsible. He just kept killing, and that's why he was the Wolverine that had like the kind of worst reputation, and he wears the uh, outfit because all of them tried to get him to wear it, and he did it to remind him and as a kind of penance. It's like, and that's what he does, and Hugh Jackman really fucking sells it. This is a different Logan than what we've had there. And I can understand people being like, ah, these variant things, you're not going to get different kind of characters. And that pretty much falls upon the content that they're given and the actor themselves being able to shift into those different kind of characters. Benedict Cumberpatch was definitely able to do that with Strange. Same with Elizabeth Olsen and Wanda. Deadpool, we definitely get it because they just switch up a lot of different kind of fucking Deadpools towards the end of this. But it's, I understand that concern. It's a valid concern. But Hugh Jackman just fucking owns it here and turning from the kind of worst Wolverine into like one that could really work out. Now, do I care if he's the Wolverine going forward or if they switch to using Laura X23 and having her be Wolverine? I'm all right with her being the Wolverine in the MCU because. She's like, listen, we got to do this. She's like, yeah, you're the wrong guy until you're not. And it's like, I love that she was able to kind of bring that up and be like, yeah. And to see her still have the kind of uh, effects that she had in the Logan movie, having those sunglasses and everything before we get to the big kind of fight scene that we get as all of them just blast in. We get uh, uh, a Punisher name dropped and everything like that, talking about all that kind of stuff as they pretty much go to battle in this Honda Odyssey and just kind of go through. And Lara being the one to fucking take off uh, Juggernaut's head was really kind of cool. But we see them going through, and it's just nice to see all the different kind of like characters and everything kind of going on as we get Wolverine and Deadpool going after Cassandra before she pretty much, rightly pretty much goes for the Wolverine to pretty much get him onto her side because he would be a valuable asset digging around in his head and her scene about all the different kind of dead people and everything and him being like yeah fuck you as they're able to get the helmet on but we see the pyro has pretty much been working with paradox and that paradox is like yeah just fucking take cassandra out she's a loose cannon fuck that shit and he pretty much suits her and she's pretty much dying but they're the cassandra's the only option or way out and she's like yeah if you take this off um I'm going to kill you all. It's like, fuck you. And Logan is able to pretty much uh, work his way with Wade and be like, let's do this. And of course, that's where she brings up the sling ring and strange and pretty much opens up that portal back to Deadpool's world, which is Earth 10,005. But uh, she pretty much digs around Pyro's head, learns about the kind of Time Ripper, and wants to utilize it for herself, pretty much taking everything out until there's only the Void left. And that's, of course, where she sends an army of Deadpool variants uh, against Wolverine and Deadpool to pretty much stop them from taking out the Time Ripper. We see pretty much Wade utilizing Nice Pool as a body shield, and we see Lady Pool who is played by Ryan Reynolds' wife, and all these other different crazy-ass Deadpools. And this is another great-ass great ass action scene. Like, it's pretty much done from, like, the uh, side perspective, and we just, again, see characters in action. We see Deadpool and Wolverine pretty much having fun, pretty much taking them out. We learn that Nice Pool does not have a regenerating factor, but all the rest of them do. And we see Baby Pool just kind of like laughing as all the people pop up. But we see Peter uh, pop up and, his, uh, and a Deadpool pop up. And they're like, yeah, Peter Pool. And everyone's like, hey, Peter. And uh, like all the Deadpools are like cool before they kind of get down there. And we see that Cassandra is pretty much utilizing her powers and abilities to do this. They pretty much get the understanding that it is powered by matter and antimatter. And that... Uh, if they kind of like do this kind of loop thing, it'll stop her, but it'll pretty much kill the person that does this. Wolverine, of course, wants to pretty much use this as this kind of like noble sacrifice and to kind of redeem himself. But Deadpool's like, nah, fuck that shit. I got this. Let's see here.
And the thing is, uh, you're thinking, oh, okay, uh, that should theoretically be able to harm them both because Wolverine is able to pop in and help him because he's not able to reach across and connect the links. But since they're both kind of sharing the load and feedback up, it's able to destroy the Time Ripper and Cassandra Nova all in one go. And we, of course, get a blast-off moment where we get to see Hugh Jackman's fucking uh, ripped-ass body, uh, which I'm like, yeah, he goes through a lot of fucking shit to get into that kind of shape, so I understand that at the end, because we have seen that, um, let's see, Hunter B-15 has been appraised of what's been going on and comes down to kind of see what's kind of happening. Paradox pretty much tries to play this off, but she's like, fuck you, I understand what's going on here. Uh, her, like, being like, holy shit, look at Wolverine, and like, a lot of different other people are like, yeah, look at it, he's like, put a fucking jacket on or whatnot and i liked it because this has very much been that kind of like friction between both of the characters throughout this movie and it has been played and done very well between both of the actors they have this kind of contentious relationship in the comics but they do come to a nice kind of understanding of each other and that understanding is very well executed and shown off here as them trying to help out this universe and understand that they have flaws and that they are broken and that they are hurt, but they put it above themselves. It's like, yeah, Deadpool wanted to be in the Avengers and seeing that the world needed him to do this, to stop this and to save it. And they both worked together and they both shared the burden, kind of like the Guardians and Guardians of the Galaxy with the Power Stone and everything. They're able to uh, stabilize that burden and of course, feedback up and Cassandra Nova had no one so she got just fucking toasted and uh, Wade does ask B-15 if she's able to kind of fix what's going on uh, fix what happened in Logan's world in Wolverine's world and she's like if I didn't he wouldn't do this he wouldn't have made this and stop the decay making it seem like uh, either they're both like an anchor being now for Wade's universe or that they've created an anchor being or something and of course he also has to like go into the void and like get some people out of there because screw that shit and she's like yeah because that has been part of the tva as well since the change with like loki and everything like that stopping the pruning and all that kind of stuff so i think it just takes a little bit of time for uh b15 and the rest to pretty much try and work that out but it's cool to see them doing that it's important to see them doing that so we pretty much get back, everybody's working out and all that, uh, Wade makes up with Vanessa, we see that Lara and Logan are now living with them, as well as Dogpool, Deadpool pretty much murdered Nicepool, so that way he could have Dogpool, uh, the, he'd probably fucking readily admit to it too, and then that's pretty much where it ends, as everybody's like, having a good chill time, it's nice to see Negasonic Teenage Warhead, uh, Yukio, all that stuff, I'm wondering what happened to Cable, because he was still alive last I remember, but it was just really well done, But we'll have to see what else they do, because this would still be a nice kind of send-off, but I would really love to see more Deadpool. This, uh, if you're if you were worried that, yeah, it's more of kind of a buddy cop thing, this is still a Deadpool movie. Even though we have Wolverine in here, and this variant is a different one, I love that they are able to have this be a Deadpool movie, introduce him, flesh him out in a way that is not fucking disgusting, where it's like, we have to either plot dump this or put the bare thin fucking minimums like, oh, it's just a fucking different Wolverine. They, he is a character, and they do a very good job of linking that up throughout here. Of course, we get the end stuff that I explained later, uh, explained earlier on, and it just, it was fun. I can't wait to watch it again because I know that I've missed a lot of fucking shit in this. There's a lot of Easter eggs and funny things going on, but it just... It was a nice send-off of, like, the Fox hero movies. Because there were good ones. The Deadpool series. Most of the stuff that was going on with the X-Men, though, as time was going on, more of the bad stuff was popping up than the good. Uh, Daredevil and Elektra was 
interesting. Blade was good, and it was interesting to have him limp, uh, <laughs> sorry, lumped in here with them. It was cool to see uh, Channing Tatum as Gambit. Hopefully, we would see more of that going on. This is where the multiverse uh, aspect was very well executed and well done, in my opinion. Uh, because most of it... <sighs> Again, I think the multiverse aspect should have been held off until a complete and utter uh, rebooting, resetting of the MCU needed to occur. Doing this as the second kind of middle phase, I don't think was the best kind of shot. Uh, like, there's other kind of aspects we could have done to build up. This seems more like of an end phase for that whole kind of stuff before you kind of rechange everything up, and then you've got vast different kind of things that you could start doing, pulling things, making this is this kind of universe, this universe, it still exists within the MCU, but we could do an experiment a little bit more here, there, everywhere kind of approach. But seeing all the different kind of variants, seeing all the Fox characters, giving them a nice kind of send off and bow tying without it having to be tied completely to the MCU was nice. I don't mind like, don't take that as me saying that there doesn't have to be some kind of teases to a kind of, like, greater thing going on. Or a story or some kind of funny, just little throwaway kind of poo-poo kind of thing that could be there. Like, checking in with, like, Stan Lee uh, and the Watchers or whatnot. You know what I mean? That's fine to do, but not everything needs to be linked and linked and linked and linked. Sometimes you can just have a story about an asshole who recruits another asshole... And then they begrudgingly become friends and sometimes, through their own stupidity, save their own world and their friends and family. And that is just a good-ass movie and Disney let this fucking thing be. Like, it's R-rated, there's blood, guts, and gore, there's cursing, there's weird fucking shit, it's a Deadpool movie. Thank you, Disney, for letting this be a Deadpool movie. Huh, at the end, one viewing is way not enough. I agree. Uh, oh, man. I'd definitely recommend this to Deadpool fans, to Hugh Jackman Wolverine fans, uh, to plot fans, character fans, lore fans, anybody really uh, that is into this kind of thing. Now, if you're not into blood, guts, and gore, and cursing ain't nobody's business, uh, it's probably not for you, but I loved it, and I loved even the comic accurate that we got with Wolverine and the use of the <laughs> of it. It just, it was awesome being able to see the comic accurate and cartoon stuff, and it looked fucking awesome, and how, uh, Deadpool called the things on the side of his head, like, uh, BJ handles or whatnot, and I was just like, oh god. So, I had fun with this. It was awesome that I had fun with this, and it was definitely worth the wait, and I was really happy to watch this, and yeah, I'm definitely into seeing what else is going to be going on, and to see if Marvel really learns from this, and just under what you need to do is understand the character, and work it, and do it well. Uh, I'm, I'm likening this kind of phase or these phases to what even happens in comic books. Uh, sometimes you get a really good banging kind of phase, you get everything working together and you get a nice conclusion, and then you get a new kind of creative team and you're like, I don't know if this is going to work out that well. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you got that inconsistency kind of popping up, and that's the inconsistency that's popped up during what's been going on here. Hopefully Marvel learns to hone in on the characters, make it well for the characters, like this, and be able to then string together a still overarching story that'll work out. Uh, Kang deserved better, so we'll have to see, and hopefully they don't throw away the character completely. There's definitely great material there. I'm going to be interested to see what they do with Doom. The important kind of bit that's going to probably be working on with that will probably be the Fantastic Four and how that kind of is set up, and what that potentially could set up for Doom. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is Doom. That has a lot of potential and possibilities. Doom is a very good character, and hopefully they're able to work with that well, especially with getting the Russo brothers uh, to kind of handle that. I've liked what they did with Cap. I've liked what they've done with the Avengers. We'll kind of have to see how this kind of works out on that. So, yeah, I'll definitely recommend this movie, and yeah. 
So those are my opinions on the movie. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.